Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to be covering VoiceThread tonight. And um, so we're going to go down the, the, the page here. What VoiceThread is, is VoiceThread is an interactive presentation software. It's online, so it works on Macs or PCs. And it is, uh, it's, it's a collaborative uh, Think of it like a PowerPoint, but on the internet. And it's collaborative because people can, you, you create it, you put it up on the website, and people can uh, comment on it. They can either write, write on the PowerPoint, they can type on it, they can record a message, they can uh, do all these things, and it just records it and puts it right onto the voice thread. And so that's why it's called VoiceThread. And um, what I'm going to do is, is very first is I want to show you a video that kind of just walks through exactly what the uh, VoiceThread looks like. And then we're going to go and get in, into how to do that. And so... The truth is, text conversations are cold, flat, and they're often ambiguous, leaving you guessing about who someone really is and what do they really mean. M5 commenting is warmer and more accurate, delivering a rich sense of presence that is simply impossible with text. On top of that, it's simple too. Just upload a collection of media into your VoiceThread discussion, by the way, almost any kind of media, and then click on the comment button. And if you comment via your computer's webcam or the microphone, you'll see that not only can you talk about and draw on the media that's in front of you, you can also very simply click in order to move to other slides in the VoiceThread. This allows one single continuous comment to cover a lot of territory. For instance, you could talk about really amazing inventions. And then you could cover some pretty scary monsters. Make sure to look over here. And also some spectacular hair, games, puzzles, adventures, more spectacular hair, and monsters, and very, very scary PowerPoint slides, and even more monsters, and cuter but still monsters. So VoiceThread is a little bit like Popeye here, who seems like a pretty simple guy, but if you really look carefully, you'll see he's actually performing some remarkably sophisticated work. And that's M5 commenting. It's simple, it's powerful, and captures the full spectrum of your presence in a way that is simply impossible with plain old text. So VoiceThread, it allows you to do the, the commenting, uh, basically having any slides up there. You can put pictures up there, you can create slides, you can create like posters and save them as PDFs, put them all, put everything into it and it just puts it as a slide and then you can comment on them yourself and then allow other people. And so we're going to go through uh, the steps of doing that. So right back here on the, the our district website, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and um, we just watched that introduction, but I, that uh, seemed like it was short, like it started in the middle of it. But, um, so we're going to go through the introduction of it, and then we're going to look at a couple of examples. Um, then we're going to uh, go through, and I'm actually going to show you how to create an account. And then from creating the account, we're going to go through the steps of uploading pictures and images to it, um, adding titles, adding comments or voice, sharing your recording, and then editing the voice thread. And basically, that's the presentation on, on how to use a voice thread. So we're going to go through all those steps. And so we're not going to 
move over to VoiceThread. And when we're on VoiceThread, right up the top it says Browse. And I want to show you this Bully Free one right here. So you, you can watch up here rather than everyone clicking on it. But when we click on this Bully Free, you'll see that... Aloha, my name is Michaela. I'm a third grader at Halakula Elementary School. When my teacher, Mr. Gutierrez, asked our class to identify the biggest problem in our lives, we all said bullying. He gave us a survey on bullying so we could find out when, where, and how often bullying happens. Next. So I'm going to lower that down and just show you. So this is the, the student that created the account, or this, this voice thread. And she put this picture in here and, and has the bully free zone. And then you'll notice that she started, uh, started off the voice thread by doing her own uh, video recording explaining this slide. Now, everything down the side here and over here, these are all comments from other people that she's sharing with. And so you can see, like this person right here, this one right now, just said uh, a text comment. This person did a text comment. This one did, I believe, a voice or an audio. And, and, and it will, you know, so you just go through there and, and it's playing that. But I don't want to see, I don't care about listening to all this. one was a voice one, so you can see that it's speaking. But then all I have to do is come over here, and if I want to zoom in on that picture, I can zoom in, and then I can move my cursor down to kind of see the whole picture, click again, and it zooms back out. Come down here, and you'll see that this is the, the, the timeline on just this one slide. So these are all the little comments that are taking place there. Here is the next slide. So if I click there, I'll actually go to the next slide. And you'll hear her speaking again. STEM by Jay Banks. S. Stay with me. So this is this new student that is now speaking. A. And then other comments. M. Make good friends. And P. Project confidence. Okay, and then if I keep going, notice here's another slide. Stay away from bullies. But there's no comments. No one has even made it. It's just a slide there. And this scene, Melissa Walter now advance to the next slide. And you'll notice here, she's talking about what this video is going to be about. And this is an actual video in this uh, voice thread. And now the video starts. After the video's done, then you get the comments that were added. So this person is... Do not bully people. It is not, not nice. You can get... And I can pause it by just clicking on the pause arrow here. I can move back and forth. And so this is called a voice thread. You can put video in. You can put pictures in. And then as you do that, you record yourself via your camera on your computer or um, a camera that you have, you know, a, an external camera. And you can bring that into this presentation. So it's basically like, like this class tonight. Let's say you had a class and your students are going to be there and you want to create a review for them. Or you want to create an announcement that goes out over parents like uh, for, for you for secondary, you might do um, uh, a review for this big test that's coming up. For elementary, they might do a science fair, which is an outside after school project that the kids do with their parents. But the parents need some help on reviewing and hearing it from the teacher rather than the student's version. You know, This is a great way of creating that presentation because you're putting in your, your information, whether it's a video, a picture, uh, a, a list of words, and then you're adding your instruction through a video. And, and it's right there. And then the nice thing about it is if the parent came in here and saw this and, and watched it and said, hey, you know what? That slide really helped me, but there was one thing that, that was missing that I needed. They could just click on here and record and add a comment to the slide so that the other parents that start watching it then get that comment. Now, this, the option of putting comments in here, it is an option. So when you publish your voice thread, you can say, I want to allow comments or not allow comments. If you don't allow comments, it will just be a presentation. 
But the beauty of allowing comments is the fact that uh, it makes you get those other people's uh, ideas or other people's experience that could make it even a better presentation. And so that is uh, one example of VoiceThread. I'm going to try to go back so we can. And then here's just another one um, that is a digital writing workshop. So you can kind of see uh, a different example that was, first one was students. Here is, oh, we want to Okay. Um, let's think about the traditional writing process. We teach. And our students here, how to pre-write. We he teach doesn't have much light on him, so he's being we really ineffective as a presenter. So this is what see we him. want them to do for So if you're going to be doing the, this, you want to make sure that you can see it. The big test. But as we begin to use the, the digital tools that we've been learning about, we... And I can just click through here and see the next. So here's some writing that he has. I think I'm using audio, images, sound, This one is just him talking. Text, no video, video, just talking. Writing. What can Here's a picture. Designing and publishing digital writing. And so you can see how you can utilize this on many different ideas. As a teacher, as a class project, think about doing a project with your students and it's a group of students that are, that are building the voice thread. They present it to the class and then the class has options of, of adding comments to them. You've just really created a great learning environment because these students are allowed to come in and, and add those comments. So, first, how do we do go about this? Let me come out and I'm just going to sign out so that you can see how to create an account. So let's start with that. Maybe it won't let me sign out. <laughs> wow, I've never experienced it. I won't let you sign out. That is so funny. Well, we'll just go to a different browser. Right. So voice thread. So here we go. Up in the upper right hand corner it says sign in or register. You click on the sign in or register. And it comes up to um, sign in. Well right below it it says register. Click on register and you're going to type in your first name, your last name, whatever email you want. Now your email will become your login. That's your login name. So pick an email that you want to use, like your district email or a personal email. But remember, if you do a personal email, your students will see it when you're teaching because that's what you log in as and that's what you share. From. So I would recommend that you use your district email. Type in, uh, you have to re-enter your email, type in your password, re-enter your password, and then you have to type in these two words for that code and then hit register and it will go through the process of registering your account. Once you have gone through and, and put that in, then you're over to this where you are signed in. And one thing that I would recommend that you do is when you come into this, you can click over here on your username and I'll just, I'll wait just a second so that you can get that done before I go on because you'll be doing this at home also so we'll give you a second to type get that registration process done
registered. So you ready to go on? Oh, good. All right, so on the right-hand side, you'll now notice that you're logged in, right? Click on the drop-down next to your name, and it says Account Information. And when you click on Account Information, it's going to make me sign in again now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my account information, and I have everything in here except to put me in the central time zone again. It changed me. You'll notice your name is there, your email, your password, but the time zone. So if you click change, and go down to the minus 7 and make sure you click on mountain time zone and then uh, all you have to do is change put me at mountain time zone and there you have it. Now there are some options to upgrade to Voice rate if you want a premium account where you can come in here and you can buy, uh, spend money for different credits and phone minutes. We're not going to go into that. We're going to stay in the free version for right now. But if you want more information right here, it says view upgrade options and it'll tell you all that information. So once you've done that, then let's come back over here to uh, about, and not about, I want to go to um, create. Click on the create button. And now we're going to go through the process of actually creating it. So the very first thing that you have to do is you actually have to upload the content. So if you're going to be working with um, uh, slides of words, you're going to probably want to go into like PowerPoint or, or Word and create the, those, the words that you want to put on this uh, voice thread. And then you want to export them as an image so that you can put these in here. Then you click on Upload here, and when you click on Upload, it gives you, do you want to bring this in from my computer, so these are saved on your computer, media source, URL, or from your webcam, meaning do you want to record right from your webcam a video. And so those are the things. I'm going to select from my computer. When I do this, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on and, and grab some pictures. And I have no idea what pictures I have in here. So apparently I don't have, yeah, so I don't have any pictures from my, well these could be scary. Mm -hmm. And the people um, who were here last week should have brought you know some pictures or some video or something. So yeah, um, you from last along with the storyboard you've prepared. So last week you you did a storyboard, so you're going to be using that, and that's we're going to use that as your your assignment to, to complete that. I'm going to show you um, uh, some pictures here. So I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to click. And the beauty of this is you can click on multiple pictures, and so by holding down the shift key, I can select more photos and upload them all at the same time. So I'm going to, I've am selected four pictures and I'm going to hit open. And then they're going to start to upload. And it says processing files. This may take a few minutes. It's just like, you know, anything that's uploading. And these are ugly pictures of myself, but that's okay. Um, once you get the videos here, what you can do is there's two places that you can add titles. The very first one up here, it says add title and description. When I click on add title and description, and that's right up above where you hit upload. You can come over here and click on title and I can just say practice the description uh, don't laugh at my pictures. <laughs> and if you are into tagging, tagging is where you're putting those little teeny uh, clue words or search items on here. And that's really good if you're if you want this voice thread to be found by other people. So put some tag words in there, especially if you're doing a, a voice thread on uh, some educational topic. You know, if you're doing something on plate tectonic plate, te I can't say it now. 
plate tectonics. <laughs> ah, put the key, the tags in there so that um, people can search for them, and then hit save. And what that does is that just puts your uh, title of of this whole uh, voice thread. Then you can actually click on. So this first picture is highlighted. Down over here, you can add a text and a link. So if I click on there, the text here, I'll I'll just put picture one. And if I did a link, it actually you could put in a URL here, and it would actually link out to the website. And when you clicked on it, it would actively take you to that website during your uh, voice thread. And then you'd have to close that, uh, that window to come back to your voice thread. And so now this is picture one. Also, and then I just click on the next one, and I can title this one picture two, and so forth. I can do picture three, picture four. Or you give them, you know, names of the places, or maybe you're sharing minerals, different pictures of minerals. You can name the minerals there. Um, and then if you get in here and you accidentally uploaded a picture that you didn't want, just click on the picture. And I'll click on this one here. I didn't want that one. And right next to it is a garbage can. I just click that garbage can. It says delete slide, yes, no. And I hit yes. That picture is now gone. And so it's right out of the voice thread, right from the very beginning. Okay. Now, um, what I could do is I can come in here, and right from the very beginning, I could add um, comments. And so right over here it says comments, and this it says uh, uh, voice, and so microphone. So if I click on this, it's going to actually start uh, the slide, and I can hit comments. I click right here on the comment button that's right at the bottom of the slide, and it's going to say, do I want to telephone, use my phone to make a comment? The next one is, do I want to use my webcam to make a comment? So it's going to put that little video there. Do I want to have a microphone? Do I want to put text? Or do I uh, want to upload an audio file? Okay. So those are the options that I have. And maybe you know when you're doing a voice thread, what's nice is the very first time you do this, uh, the voice thread, maybe the first slide, you might want to do a video. So they can see your face, they can see that you're there, and that you know this is actually you doing the presentation. And so if you do that, you just come over here, click on the video, it opens it up, and it's going to, very first of all, it says Adobe Flash Player settings, camera, and it says, do I want to allow it or not? I have to hit allow, and then it'll go through and record. Welcome to my presentation about myself and how to use photo booth to create ugly pictures. And boom, I've got my recording. Welcome to my presentation about myself and how to use photo booth to create ugly pictures. Okay, so now I have that video on that first on that first picture, okay? And then I can go back, to, I can um, embed, no, I don't want to embed that, close. I can go to uh, the next picture, which I save that, and that will save. I can even come up, if I want to, just have fun, and you can see here that if you move the, your cursor onto the screen, it draw, brings a pencil up or a pen, and I can actually, well, you're supposed to be able to write on it. I have to record more. And now it's not letting me go on. Okay, so um, some of the things that you could do is uh, in here when you're doing this, it says over here playback options. You can click on playback options and it'll tell you playback options for your voice thread. Wait four seconds before turning the slide. So that's an automatic thing when the slide is done. It will wait four seconds before it goes. Sometimes that's a little bit long for some people. So some people will move it down to two. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, start playing when open. Most of the time when you open your voice right, you want it to play, so I'm going to leave that there. 
and then show full screen when open. So if I click on that, it will actually go to full screen so that uh, they can see it. And I'm gonna leave that closed and then I hit save. And then um, publishing options here. This is where you make the, the thing. Allow anyone to view. I can put that check mark in and then everyone can view this voice thread but no, but no new comments are allowed. It will never show up on the browser web page or in the search results. You are the only person who can edit this voice thread, okay? Then over here it says allow anyone to comment. If I do that, now everyone can make comments. But over the second one it says moderate comments. If I put that, everyone can view and comment on the voice thread. But new comments are moderated. It will never show up on the browser page or in the search results. You are the only person who can edit the voice thread. So, so they, you know, as you moderate, then that means you can go in and click off those uh, comments that you might not want on that voice thread if someone was being rude. And then show on the browse page. If you click that, then people can browse for it. Okay. And I'm actually not going to check any of those because I don't want it this out here. And I hit save. And, and if I click here to export, um, this, is, this will allow me to export it, but since I'm on the free version, it won't allow me to export it, so I'll close that. And record more. I'm trying to get it to let me go past it. There's my video. Let's see, my voice thread. So here, if I click here, here's my practice, but, and so you'll see. Well, that's interesting, because I don't remember moving it around. So there's my comment, and then I can click close to the next one. And there's no comments on here, but I could. I could come in here and type a comment. This is a funny picture of me. And then notice that I've added my comment to the next the next page. I can even come up here and go to the next picture. Here it is. And I could say I want to. Um, I'll do a, a comment again. This is me. And then I can come up here and draw a bubble. writing this and it's recording all of this as I'm doing this and hit save and now if I come back and hit play you'll see this is me and it comes up and it's drawing those little speech bubbles And so it, you can see what you just did. And that would be the end of it. And when you get to the end, it says, by Ross, don't laugh at my pictures. It gives you a little bit of here. Here, share this voice thread. Use private, make it public to post or email link. So if I made it public, the people would see, I don't want this ugly one to go out because it's just a practice thing. But if I made it public, then I can actually email this out and send it to my students. I can send it to uh, parents or or the community at large. If, if I was doing something for a play, or you know, it's there's just so many things that you could do with VoiceThread on so many different topics that you could do with this, and it's just really, really powerful. But the real beauty is is that, is that collaboration when you get other students that are working as a group and they bring in all their pieces, and then you allow that comment. And it just builds into some really, really good uh,
presentations that are, are, uh, are really interactive. And so I really like the idea that you, it's, it's a different way of doing a presentation that our teachers aren't used to because they're so used to doing um, uh, PowerPoints and just presenting and not, you know, allowing the students to get involved in this. So this is a very, very powerful tool and a lot of our kids don't know about VoiceThread it's a, it's a newer product, and so this is something that would be really fun to do. Um, so with that, that is VoiceThread, and it's, it's actually that simple to do. It is just to create a VoiceThread. You upload the images, upload the pictures, uh, the, the text that you want in there, and then record your comments on each of the slides, and then uh, Make sure it's live and allow the comments, and then you can go and email it out to your class. Um, so your assignment for this week to get credit is to basically take your storyboard that you did last week, now actually get the images or the text that you need, uh, type it in Word, type it in PowerPoint, save them as a, a JPEG so you can bring them into VoiceThread, and you are to cre create a voice thread from your storyboard. And um, you'll need to make sure that you do at least a video comment on one slide. You need to have an audio comment on a slide. And you need to have some type of written comment or with the pencil drawing on the slide. So that you're using each of the features in the voice thread. And you need to um, make that voice thread public. Um, if you want to allow comments, that would, that's up to you, but you do need to make it public, and then you need to email that voice thread to, uh, or copy the link and post that link to your voice thread on the blog for the assignment, uh, for, on the class blog. And then next week, what we're gonna do, because we kind of did this out of order, um, we recorded this for those that aren't here, for those of you that aren't here, so you'll get this. Um, next week, we're going to be covering Google Apps, the one that we skipped or missed because of what week was it that we missed that? Um, it was fall break. Fall break, spring, or yeah, the fall break. And so, because we missed that class of fall break, we're going to make that up um, next week because this week, I guess, apparently was supposed to be an off week. And so, uh, that's where. And yeah, and it's all updated on the website, on okay. the IT website now, and it's also updated on the class blog, and so um, you can see the correct schedule on both of those now. Remember, our class blog is pdwebreflections, plural, dot blogspot dot com, and so it's all updated there now if they're confused Great. about the schedule. And so I know this was a little bit shorter this week. But now this gives you the extra time that you can actually make your voice thread. And uh, for those of you that aren't here, you can create your account. Spend that time to go get, gather the images that you need to, to make to, for the, the storyboard that you made. Um, if you're going to put text in there, open up PowerPoint and type in the text on this slide. And then export those slides as JPEGs. And, and then say, know where you're, you're saving them on your desktop so that you can upload them to VoiceThread and actually make your VoiceThread. And this is going to be really interesting and exciting to see what type of VoiceThreads that you've made. And we'll be uh, looking for them. Yeah. And I'm just going to add um, what's cool too about VoiceThread is, you know, we talked last week about how digital storytelling isn't limited to any particular software. So you could create an actual movie, an iMovie. Yeah. You could create a slideshow, an iMovie or iPhoto or Photo Story. Um, as Ross already said, you could create a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation. You could create something in GarageBand and export it. Just be careful about the file types yeah. on that. Or but, Prezi. Or Prezi. Which is um, a newer one, too. And on VoiceThread, you can upload any of the file types that are common. JPEGs, if you just want to upload a photo series as we saw Ross do, but I also just did a .mov file, a movie file, and as long as it's not humongous, <laughs> yeah. it's, it uploaded just fine. And so, you know, as you create your projects, consider that you don't just have to do this as a little slideshow. You could 
use the storyboard you created last week and to create everything in a different program if you prefer and then upload it into VoiceThread or you can create it right on VoiceThread. So there are options um, of different ways to do that. And when I had a whole um, bunch of pictures that I wanted to upload, I just highlighted all seven photos at the same time and they all uploaded they all together work. and in order and it was really pretty slick. <laughs> and because of that, what Katie just said, uploading any different type of files, I did check to see if a PDF went up. But oh, and you know, I said PDF, but I meant JPEG, and that's a good question. I'm not yeah, positive. I'm not positive about I know PDF, for sure MOV, PowerPoint, and JPEG, but yeah, we okay. have to try PDFs where, where? And, and Keynote to see how those yeah, do too. See. But one thing that I would tell you is don't be afraid because when you use this voice thread in a class project, your students have cameras on their phones or their iPod touches and let them record the little video and then just export it out, bring it to school the next day as they build their projects. They have the little video clips that they've made already. Those work. Yeah. And so uh, don't be afraid to let them use the tools that, that they already have to, to gather this, especially if they're working on a collabor collaborative project. Yeah. So. And, and asynchronous collaboration is one of the nice things about this too. As you think about the comments you might want to make on the blog and how you would use this, um, I saw a demonstration where kids from different class periods, same teacher, um, did the same project, basically, yeah. in their different class periods, and this I think was a middle school in this case, and then after the projects were all posted on VoiceThread, the next week she had each class watch and comment on the other class periods' projects. and. It was really neat to see the kids get excited about interacting and commenting, saying, oh, I learned this, or I couldn't really understand this very well. And then they took one more week, and they went back, and they re, you know, they commented on the comments, and they edited things, and it was really neat to see. So there's a lot of possibilities, and, yeah. and I think in that, you know, uh, spirit, <laughs> that when you create this for your homework assignment, in your comments on the blog, post the URL for the voice thread that you have created so that the other members of our class can watch them and make comments. Yeah, so make sure if you're going to, um, if you're going to, when you post your voice thread that you turn on comments so that the others can go in and look at it and it'll be, it'll be really neat to go in and see those. So, anything else you need to add? I don't think so. Um, I, there are lots of great examples. On yes. VoiceThread. Take, Watch and explore. Take and the time to go through that browse button yeah. and browse the different different voice threads just to see what they're like because that will help you decide how to create them because there's so many different unique ways to do it. Um, so yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions as you've been sitting in here? All right. With that, I think we're done. You have the next hour of class to work. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we found, um, as we were messing around <laughs> with VoiceThread, that they have options here besides just getting pictures off your computer, and one was this media sources. So we clicked on media sources, and um, some of the media sources that they have were um, Facebook and Flickr, and then this one was the New York Public Library Digital Collections. So we clicked on that and then it's got all these choices and in the search box we've typed Thomas Paine because she wanted a picture of Thomas Paine for her presentation. She clicks search and she gets all these choices that come up. Um, pretty cool collection that you know you wouldn't be able to get on your own. So she clicks on it and simply clicks import and it just gives her a little message that says it's been added to her presentation. Just like that. Just added one to the page. So she's closing and you can see that there's the picture added to her project. And so that's really nice because we were saying, you know, over here you also have the option for URL and webcam. But URL can be a little iffy if you don't know the copyright. You know, we've talked about Creative Commons and things like that. So you certainly know that there's pics for learning and things like that you could use. But, but by going to the media sources they already have listed, we know that we're cool on copyright and it pops it right in. So a really neat, neat resource that Shelly found for us. <laughs> Accidentally. Yeah. <laughs>